Hey, welcome back, man. It's time for that industrial tutorial, man. I've been seeing some people in the comments tell me, Hey, Dylan, can you show us how to do it? My friend's been pushing me to do it, so here I am. I don't usually do videos like this. I'm really not the person to do this. It took me so long to even just start using electricity in the game. Anyways, this right here is the system that I have set up, and I'm going to be explaining what it is real, real quick. So, it's, so it all started with this furnace system here. I feel like this is something that you can just plop down, early wipe, you only need a solar panel and a small battery to actually do it, which is amazing, but pretty much the way that this works, right? If I put raw materials inside of here, and even some wood. Let's go get a little bit of wood real quick, right? So if I get that, and then I put in some wood, as you can see, it's already being taken out, right? So all that's automatically getting put into these furnaces. Wood, metal, sulfur, okay? And then all the cook stuff is instantly being moved out and put back into this box, as we can see. But where is it going? We have a conveyor right here that brings it out and over to our drop box for it to be automatically sorted. Currently, I only have metal frags being sorted right here, as we can see, so they're all going into the metal frag box. But that just goes to kind of show you, right? Like, you can create, like, furnace systems and connect them up to your uh, drop box and then have it all be automatically sorted, right? Yeah, I feel like, uh, aside from the drop box and shit over there, I feel like just this system right here is a super, super nice system to have early wipe. It's really easy to make, and... So yeah, I guess that I'm gonna go ahead and get into how to make this right here real quick. We'll just do it here on the opposite side as well, okay? So the very first thing that you're gonna need is obviously a box to put the raw stuff into and for the cooked stuff to come back to, right? You're gonna have just one, uh, storage adapter, that's called. And then, and then you're going to have one conveyor here and one conveyor there. And I just now flipped it to where they both uh, align properly with how they connect, just like that, right? So you have the output of this conveyor right here, then you have the output of this one up here, right? But yeah. Uh, so, and something to know about the conveyors, if you don't even know what all this is, they serve as item pumps and filters, right? So you can set specified items to be filtered in, or you could just have no filter at all and everything can just move through it, right? But in this situation, we are going to be wanting to use filters, right? So if we're pumping stuff out of this into furnaces, what are we going to be pumping out? Obviously, like, the wood and stuff like that, right? And, like, just raw materials. This right here should be your furnace filter, right? Like, what well, goes into your furnaces, which is going to be that conveyor right there. And then pretty much this conveyor right here is going to be what's bringing stuff back in, right? So what's going to be coming back in from furnaces? Obviously, actually, I think that I have it copied. Paste, because, yeah, you can copy filters, then paste them, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> but that's just going to be your charcoal, cooked sulfur, cooked frags, cooked high-quality metal, right? So now I guess let's go ahead and place down these furnaces. We're just going to be having three for this example. You could do six, you could do nine, you can use electric furnaces for this. You can do all of that, and it's all, you know, basically going to be the same thing. So, yeah, actually, let's go ahead and just make this into a six furnace system, right? The other side was three. Let's do six. So if I was only doing three, I would only need one splitter. But since we're going to be doing six, I'm going to need, I think, three splitters. Yeah. Which is pretty much just going to be done through this, right? So we're going to have the storage adapter on top of this box that we put our resources into. It's going to go into this conveyor and then out the conveyor into splitters. So we can go ahead and just put down... I think that it is going to take three splitters because, yeah, pretty much we're just going to have to daisy chain all these up, right? So you have this main first splitter, okay? The industrial in is going to be from this right here boom right so we have this right here pumping stuff out and put into the splitter right and now we can connect the other splitters into this splitter that's going to be having the items come in through these outputs here right so we're just going to go like that right there and then industrial out too over here and then if we look at all the outs that we still have we still have one out here one two three four five six seven right and so this could actually do seven furnaces because that's how many outs we have there. Yeah, now pretty much you would just kind of connect these up to the furnaces, which you're going to need a storage adapter for each of them. Super, super easy. Then you're just going to bring the industrial out right here, all the way down to underneath the furnace, connect it with the industrial in. I like to kind of do it like that, just to keep the piping a bit clean, keep it hidden back there for the most part. But I'll leave uh, all the pipe organization to you and how you want to do it, right? <clears throat> now let's go ahead and just... We're just going to keep on just bringing all the outs on these splitters and just plugging them into the inputs on the furnaces, though. Yeah, no, man, like, this this whole system is actually really, really easy to do. I highly suggest uh, practicing it because, it, I mean, it is, like, unbelievably simple. Like, it's stupid easy. So at this point, all of these furnaces are now connected, and everything, wood and raw resources, will automatically get put into it. But we don't have it to where all these furnaces' resources that's cooked are leaving and being put back into this box. 
that's when this conveyor right here comes into play to bring stuff back in. So pretty much we're going to be using com uh, combiners now, right? Since we have six furnaces, we're going to be using a total of three of uh, these combiners. Kind of like this, right? So all uh, six of the furnaces are going to be connected to the industrial ends back here. We have a total of six slots, as we can see. So let's go ahead and just bring all of the outs on these storage adapters into the ends on these. I'll do this first one right here just for a very quick example, you know, just like that. And then, you know, just keep on routing it back here like this. And then, yeah, then just repeat that process just all the way around. And then you should end up with something kind of like this right here, which is stupid easy. Then you could take both the outs and put it into the end of the next combiner right here. And then this industrial out goes all the way into the input of this conveyor that brings stuff in, right? So we can go ahead and just route this above everything, I suppose. Just like that. Right, so now we have all the piping done. All the piping is done for this automatic furnace system that brings raw materials and wood in, and then brings all the cooked materials out and put back into this box, right? We just need to power, uh, power up this right here. And I mean, like, in order to do that, like, like it's all up to you on, like, how you want to do your power. I mean, obviously, you don't just want to rock a solar panel and a small battery forever. But for this specific system, it'll work just fine. Because all the power that's used right here is just two power. And that's two out of ten inside of a small battery that's being used, which is amazing. So we're going to have a solar panel right here. This would go on, like, on top of your base and whatever, obviously. Then we have it going into the power in, and then we're going to have this going out over here. Going into the power input on this, then we're going to go to the electrical pass-through and bring it into the power input on that right there next to it. And as you can see, both those now have power, and if we look at the battery, um, the capacity is actually still going up because, again, the max output is 10. And, uh, yeah, we actually need to turn these bad boys on, though. And, yeah, on the right side, we have our raw stuff and wood, and then on the left side, we have all of our cooked materials. <clears throat> so, yeah, now, literally, if I just put bunch of wood a bunch of sulfur and then maybe like eh, i don't know a hundred high qual let's just say i guess all right then also some raw metal silly goose man if we just start to put a lot of this into here right like that this this right here right just all that right there you can actually see that it's just going to be sulfur and high qual for now because that's the first two things we put in and furnaces only have two input slots so Having large furnaces will give you more of a range on, like, how many things at once can be inside of furnaces. But there can only be two resources inside of small furnaces at once. But then pretty much you can just start these. You are going to have to manually start them. There are tutorials out there that can teach you how to make it to where the furnaces start and stop automatically. That's a little bit more complex than what I'm going for right now, though. I want to do something simple and very easily comprehensible. So that's kind of why I'm doing this, just because it's the style that I personally like to use. And I feel like having to start your furnaces up once is okay, because as long as you have wood inside of here with your resources that you're cooking, they're just going to stay cooking because wood keeps on going into them, right? <clears throat> but yeah, now if we look inside of here, as you can see, the cooked materials are now coming out. There's no metal going in there yet, though, because it's just all sulfur and high coal. So we're going to have to wait for the high coal or the sulfur to finish before the metal can start to go in. But yeah, I feel like that right there is a super simple system. And, again, like, like if you want to rock more furnaces than this, you just have to add more splitters and just chain them all up together. And that's really it. It's, it's super easy. But now, I guess, we can go ahead and get into how to sort all of this into your drop box and then go into an actual box inside your storage system, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to show you the absolute basics right now is all. So let's go ahead and have a large box right here. And it's going to be a drop box. And then we can have all of our cooked resources go into a box as well. Cooked resources or just metal frags. I'm just going to do metal frags specifically though. So we're going to have our drop box there. And then we can have our cooked up metal frags from our furnace system over there going into here automatically only the metal is going to be going into this nothing else so first things first both these are going to need storage adapters on top of them it's that simple you can fit a total of four storage adapters on boxes but with a lot of loot room designs and you know stuff like that it's pretty rare that you're going to be able to fit all four but um you can usually get away with having at least two and on your drop box you want to have it be super accessible because you're going to be having stuff run in and out of it all over the place so having your drop box have like three adapters at least 
is pretty ideal because you're going to have one connected <coughs> to your small furnace system, electric furnace system, whatever. Then you're going to have one connected to your large furnace system. And then you could have like another drop box on top of your base to bring stuff down, put into this drop box and automatically sort it, right? So having more than one storage adapter for different activities is sometimes very ideal. But yeah, as you can see, we're starting to get pretty low on the high call inside of these furnaces. We actually only have one left here. And then boom, we automatically have metal coming in now that the high call is finished, right? Which means we should be getting metal frags inside of here. Boop, there it is, right there. <sighs> right, so let's say that we want to hook up this furnace system into our drop box system that brings stuff over to our entire automatic sorting system with, let's just say, nine boxes for this example, right? The more boxes that you use, the more splitters you're going to need to chain up with one another to have enough uh, outputs on all the splitters. We kind of went over that over here. We had to, you know, like I could have just rocked one splitter to have three furnaces, just, just how I did on this side. Uh, this goes into the input, and then I have three outputs for three furnaces, right? Since I wanted more furnaces, I needed more splitters, and I just needed to connect them up with the first splitter, right? <clears throat> so let's say that we want to bring this over there. Okay, well, we're going to be needing a storage adapter on this bad boy right there. And then we're also going to need a conveyor, like, right here to go into this, right? So, yeah, industrial input. Let's go ahead and just bring that all the way over to here and plug it into the industrial output right there right and so that plugs into there and you have the output right here that can be plugged in to the input there this system is now set up to move all the items out of that box well you're not going to want all the items because if you have all the items getting moved that's going to be moving all the wood and all the raw resources right which you want to keep inside there for the furnaces specifically so inside of this pretty much you're just going to be wanting to copy this left side uh with all the cooked stuff just copy that and then paste it right over here. <clears throat> and then that'll just move all the cooked stuff over to here. But we're going to need to power it up, obviously. So let's go ahead and take the electrical pass-through from uh, this bad boy. Electrical pass-through. Try and keep our wiring pretty clean. And then, boom, there we go. Now it's plugged in, right? So now if I turn this on with those filters there, turn it on, we should start to see all the cooked resources get into this thing which is just our drop box, right? So we're going to have a box that has, uh, that's a charcoal box, that's a sulfur box, that's a metal frag and high coal box. So yeah, let's go ahead and make this box right here, metal frag and high coal specific, right? So to do that, we're going we're to need another conveyor, obviously. Let's go ahead and place down this thing. I'm going to rotate it to where it's like kind of upside down. And yeah, now pretty much we're just going to bring the output into this, into the input there. And then, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for that. So pretty much this conveyor is specified to this box. For every single box they have inside of a storage system, where it's like, you know, specific stuff being filtered to that one box, you're going to always need a conveyor per box, right? So if I have a nine-box sorting system, one box is like for meds, one's for charcoal, one's for sulfur, one's for metal, you know, all those nine boxes are going to have to have their own conveyor to pump stuff in and filter it in. But the way to bring everything from this drop box over to your storage system, your multiple, you know, conveyors and boxes, you're going to need to bring stuff out of here, obviously. So with that, you're going to be needing splitters, just how we had over there. And, and again, this right here is going to be like a nine box storage system uh, for the example. So yeah, keep that in mind. So you're going to have one splitter there, turn it upside down. Boop, boop. Boom. And then with the very first one, you're going to bring the industrial in from this here, right? Directly from the storage adapter into the uh, splitter. And then pretty much with all three of these outputs here, you're going to bring them all to the inputs here, right? So we're going to bring this right here down, plug that in, this right here down, plug that in. And then, well, yeah, you know the drill. It's very, very simple. And now pretty much with all of these extra outputs, which is three, 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 which is a total of nine, right? You're gonna be bringing the outputs of these. I'm gonna go from industrial out one over to this conveyor. And then that right there is now gonna be pumping items from this drop box through the splitters into this conveyor that has specified items that is gonna be metal fragments and high quality metal just cooked up right because all the raw stuff gets put inside the box over there and actually you even could make it to where your drop box automatically bring stuff into this box right here like the raw materials right because your drop box is going to be like your main box where like you get back home from raiding or whatever just whatever run you're on and then it automatically all gets sorted right 
So we can have it to where this right here automatically gets put into the metal box right here, which is, you know, raw materials and such. So let me just go ahead and power up that conveyor over there real quick. Right there. Let's go ahead and bring you all the way back over here and plug you into the power uh, input there, right? So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five conveyors, which is only half of the amount that this battery right here actually does. Active usage is three, right? But if I turn on this and turn on this, then it's going to be higher, obviously. It's going to be a total of five. But if we want to have raw resources get brought into this, right, all that we really have to do is copy this filter right here. I would not copy the wood. I think that you should always manually put the wood into here because you're probably just, just going to be wanting to have your own wood box inside your uh, so, uh, sorting system. So manually filling up this box with wood here and there. I feel like that's okay. It's not asking too much, right? Because you don't just want all your wood going into here and your furnace is just wasting all of it as they cook nothing as soon as all your raw stuff's finished, right? <clears throat> so I would just simply come over here, copy the raw resources, come uh, over here, paste it and then get rid of the wood now all the raw resources that i put into here will automatically get put into that box and automatically put into all the furnaces which will get cooked put back into this box cooked stuff will come back into this box and then you know it's all going to get sorted inside the boxes uh from the conveyors you have connected into the splitters right so so let's go ahead and just try that out right now though okay let's just go ahead and get a little bit of metal ore put that inside there and the sulfur inside there and if we see this should just start to leave Oh, yeah, no, the conveyor's not on, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and turn on that conveyor, which is an item pump and item filter. Okay, it's getting moved out. It's being brought into here. As you can see, it's getting put into there. But is it being brought out? Yes, it is. We just now saw a little bit of it going, right? So if we just look inside the furnaces, yep, you can see the number is jumping up a bit. So now all that's happening. Stuff gets cooked. It automatically gets brought out put back into the drop box which we do not have set up for everything to go everywhere yet right so i guess we can go ahead and just make a box for everything here we can have the metal high qual box and then a sulfur box and then a charcoal box let's yeah, yeah let's go ahead and do that so boom here we go we have all three of our boxes again we could use nine with this splitter system but i'm not going to be doing all of that because it's all very basic you just have to repeat the same steps for each uh for each box right so let's go ahead and place down this here this here boom right but since we have three boxes in the automatic sorting system that we want to be filtered, we're going to need three conveyors. So now let's go ahead and bring, okay, so we have this right here going on to a conveyor. Let's go ahead and bring this one down, put that inside the conveyor, then, the, then bring this one out, put that inside the splitter. Boom. Easy. So now this right here is all hooked up. Thing is, they now need power, right? So we're going to go ahead and take out the electrical pass-through, bring that back over here, because you can just hook up all the conveyors together with the power. Power input, and then electrical pass through, bring that back, bring it back up, power input. Boom, now we have all that power. And then now, my friends, the industrial input is going to be put into the industrial output of the conveyors, just like so. Just like that, right? So for our charcoal box, obviously we're just going to only have charcoal, right? Unless you want to have like your sulfur and charcoal inside the same box, you can also add sulfur to this. And you can always do that, right? But I'm showing, you know, how to have, like, your own sulfur box and charcoal box. Just only cooked because everything gets cooked, cooked automatically. Now, if you want stuff that's raw to go to this and you don't even want any of the furnace system, you can literally just remove this storage adapter that brings stuff over to the furnace system and just simply add sulfur ore and cook sulfur to this and uh, raw metal and raw high qual with the cooked stuff to this, right? Uh, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. It's really easy to fiddle with and change to what you want right but now pretty much right now pretty much we have this output automatically being brought up into the splitter system which is all connected to these conveyors so as soon as i end up activating these con uh, these three conveyors we should we should start to see all these boxes fill up um automatically and all sorted so let's go ahead and just turn all that right there on right so if we start to look inside this box sulfur is leaving high coal is leaving metals leaving and charcoal is leaving metal box has the high coal and the metal that's filling up, charcoal, and sulfur. So all that right there is getting automatically sorted, right? But the thing is about a sulfur box, you might want to also add something like gunpowder onto it, right? Just because that's, you know, you kind of want your sulfur and gunpowder together maybe, right? It's kind of up to you, but that'll now make it to where I can just depot gunpowder. And as you can see, 
and now leaves and goes inside the box, right? Anyways, though, I hope this tutorial helped you out a little bit. I try to make it simple, and uh, yeah, be sure to not rock a small battery the entire time. As you can see, the active usage is seven because we have a total of seven conveyors down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And the max output of that thing is 10. So to make like a starter storage system, you can definitely just rock a small battery if you want. But you eventually want to upgrade to a medium, if not ideally a large battery, just so you're really set up, right? And like a windmill, not a solar panel. And yeah, thanks for coming by today and checking out this video. I appreciate you and your time, my friend. I hope that uh, I hope that you learned something new within this. Uh, I'm still learning myself. I don't have it all figured out quite yet, but I've been getting told that I should make a tutorial. So, you know, here I am doing it, right? And yeah, other than that, I will see you in the next video. And if you made it here to the end of this video, comment the word industrial, okay? Thanks for making it here to the end as well. And I'll see you in the next one, my friend. Peace out and uh, goodbye. Dear.